Welcome back, folks. Well, it's Spitfire Debates here. You couldn't tell because we got a nice little classy set going. I'm Ben Fountain. That's Bobby Keo, and today we're doing nothing about movies. So, Bobby, three, two, one, go. All right. First, we're talking about the Academy Awards and their decision to make ten Best Picture nominees instead of five. This is a big change from the very, very static Academy that usually doesn't do anything different every year. So, Ben, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, I think it's a great thing if you want movies like Transformers 2 and Jennifer's Body to come out and, you know, have a chance to win this award. Ah, uh, sarcasm. Yeah, no. it's, no, I don't think it's going to be that good. It just leads to too many movies getting in, which leads to, like, diluted voting and chance for, like, ties. Do you want really ties involved? Do you want to really have that, the battle going up against what the best movie is of that year? Well, they, uh, can, they can work out some sort of tiebreaker. The thing about it is, though, most moviegoers are mainstream. Right. They want the big budget movies. Um, they want the uh, movies that don't get like every A plus from every critic. Um, look at The Dark Knight. A plus is for pretty much every critic. Didn't get a nomination because you know what? It, it's a comic old, movie. They're old. No, they're old cranky people that run the Academy. That's the problem. But the thing is, again, going back to what I was saying with the tie, would you want to p decide to pick up between the Shawshank Redemption and Forrest Gump? Well, you, you know what? They could figure out something like that. I'm not really worried about the tiebreaker. I'm sure if they, they, they've made a tiebreaker. Thing is here, uh, I want to see movies that I've actually seen. You All know, right. I can't see half the movies sometimes. You know, they're... they're you didn't they're see very... Slumdog Millionaire? I saw Slumdog Millionaire, but that's one movie out of like the past, what, 50 years? I'm talking about <laughs> movies... Like, uh, I'm talking about, you know, like... I want the Dark Knights in there. I want those I movies know. that get good reviews. The Hangover, great reviews, lots of money. Why not give it a nomination and get it in there? It's not. It's going to make more people want to watch the show and be interested in it. Because that's you know what, the Academy Awards ratings have been going down for years now. That's you know what, this true. is one way they're trying to uh, put it up there. And I don't think I it's like going to work too much because okay. it's just one category. But all right, we well, shall see. Let's stop talking about the past and look something to the future. But the future, I'm talking about 2010, not 2012, 2010. We want to see what the best movie is coming out in that coming year. Bobby, what are you looking forward to? I'm talking about Shutter Island right now. Shutter Island? Uh, Leo? Leo? Leo and uh, Martin. It's a pretty good uh, formula. You know, the last movie okay. that it padded was, it a good, it was a pretty good movie. It, was it won wicked. that best picture. You know, yeah, exactly. That we're talking there about. you go. So but, that's two um, movies. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, it seems like a pretty good movie. You know, okay. uh, it's got Leo doing another Boston accent, so... I'm a, I'm a fire marshal over here. It's a federal, I'm a federal, I'm federal, a duly federal, appointed sorry. federal marshal. Duly okay. appointed, okay, duly gotcha. Appointed. Another movie I'm looking forward to, which has Boston ties, Edge of Darkness. Mel Gibson's back, not doing Passion of the Christ and stupid stuff like that. Apocalypto, yeah. But <laughs> Edge of Darkness, it got pretty much a different version of Taken. You take Liam Nielsen out, which I thought was a great person. Awesome. In that, but you take Mel Gibson in, and then you bring him as a Boston cop who gets his wife, his, not his wife, his daughter, killed right in front of him. So there you go. You got uh, Mel Gibson with a Boston accent. Everybody loves Boston accents these days. I know, because, huh? you know, this money. They're not paying taxes. <laughs> but Everyone know, else is except, the, you know, movie producers. But, but it looks like a good movie, though. You know, um, he's returning to his Mad Max, Braveheart, exactly. and, all, and you know, the Patriot, all his kind of, like, action exactly. roots. Because, you know what, people love to see that from Mel Gibson. Exactly. They don't always want to see this crazy religious mumbo-jumbo exactly. and, like, you know, other kind of stuff. They want to see him just kicking butt. Exactly. And very quickly, I'll talk about another movie, which might, you know, be the comedy of the year. It's really rough to say since it's about November. But it's comedy of the year it's called Paul it's got everyone from Shaun of the Dead the two you know British guys that did great and they did great in Hot Fuzz and movies like that mm -hmm. with Seth Rogen who's been you know probably I would say the comedic actor of the decade most um, right now so far but so that, that looks like a winning formula to me I'm gonna go exactly. see it we'll at midnight all right so, so let's do it I will be there let's do it all right now let's talk about the past again uh, we're going to end October uh, the best movies of the month uh, there was a lot of clunkers, there was a lot of good ones, but Ben, I'm asking you what yours was. What was your movie of the month? Best movie of the month was Law Abiding Citizen. Gerard Butler makes up for that awful movie that was called Gamer, that didn't <laughs> even deserve it. That one had potential, but that one completely failed. This one was incredible. Had great action sequences, had great drama, had great suspense, and Jamie Foxx played a good character, but I haven't seen a movie in a while where you felt sympathetic for a villain. That's exactly how this movie came out, same sy sympathetic for a villain. And a spoiler alert, first 15 first 15 minutes of it, you'll see why he becomes the villain with his family just completely getting slaughtered. But it's also Gerard Butler. He's exactly. You know? He is. So, so I, I'm talking about uh, Boondock Saints too. That's my you, pick. Of course you got Boondock Saints. Because yeah. I love the first one. And you know right. what? Um, Troy Duffy, it took him a decade. You know, the guys right. got older and everything. But he finally came back with a, a nice homage to the fans. Something that the fans could love. Because you know what? It was made for us. <laughs> um, the people that love the first one. There's a lot of gratuitous violence. There's a lot of swearing. There's a lot of uh, funny moments that Not make sense from the first movie. Do you but think, it was great. Now, do you think with this, do you think that the sequel should have been made? Do you think the sequel should have Yeah, it should have. It, it, it was a great job. And you know what? Um, I, I'm excited. That I'm happy it was made because okay. you know what? It was a great thing for the fans to see. Now, I mean, it, it got, it's getting trashed by critics, but you know what? I'm my own critic, and I say that it's a great movie. So yeah, I saw your review out. on. Check that out on the SuffolkVoice.net, by the way. Your review was what? Four and a half out of five? That was Kevin's review. That was Kevin's review. Yeah. Oh, my but bad. But we look at the likes, so it's okay. Exactly. Anyway. Yeah, not um, at all. It's a good movie, though. I, I recommend checking it out, though. Okay. 
So we're going to go something else from theaters to your home entertainment. There's always that one DVD that people always have that watch a thousand times over. Bobby, what's that go-to DVD for you? The Empire Strikes Back. Of course it is. Because you know what? It's probably could be make a case that it's one of the best movies of all time. Uh, oh it has boy. action. It has suspense. Mm -hmm. it, it has um, a love, like any love story that people mm -hmm. can sympathize with. You know, Han okay. and Leia. And it's got Yoda. You know, it's got a, an awesome muffin looking thing that talks <laughs> in, in backward sentences. And you know what? I just can't get over it. It's the kind of movie I can put in any time when I'm feeling happy, sad, glum, uh, happy. You know, <laughs> no matter what. I mean, I'm happy a lot. So okay. I, I love watching it though. That's the one I'm always in my DVD. Okay. I'll go over something that's a little more indie, a little more style. It's some little movie you might have heard. It's called Grandma's Boy. Yeah. It's pretty much. Movie. Everyone that were in Adam Sandler's movies, you know, Happy Gil, More Billy Madison, all those kind of movies, except Adam Sandler, and they turn these psychos loose, which yeah. belongs to a raunchy, hilarious movie. And the person that makes the movie better is the grandmother, of Doris course. Roberts. Doris Roberts. And with that, she's like the grandmother that everyone wishes they had. The, just that cool grandmother to get away with anything. You can you play know. video games. And drink pot. And drink pot. That's <laughs> right, drink pot. You have to watch the movie to figure that one out. Yeah. But it's just a really funny movie from beginning to ending, which is just a complete laugh fest. Well, they do a good job with it. You know, Rob Schneider, I think Alan Covert is his name. He's the guy who's the, the lead. He's in every Sandler movie, and mm -hmm. he finally gets his own lead job here. He does a great job. He does a very good job. You know, you know who makes a cameo in there? Kevin Nash. Of Wrestler. course. Yep. Wrestler, you know, Wrestler, Wolfpack, yeah. NWO, baby. All right, but that's enough for today, folks. Check back with us on the SuffolkVoice.net for more of our Spitfire debates. That's Bobby Keel. I'm Ben Fountain. See you later. That was more refined. <laughs>